There have been a number of new additions added to the drawing tools and the brushes in Anime Studio 11. First, let's take a look at the freehand tool. As you can see, I have my T-Rex here on screen. I just want to create a new vector layer. That way, I can work with the drawing tools. And in this case, I'll just name this one Ground, and I can place it below the T-Rex. Now, first, with the freehand tool, let me just select that, and I'll make sure I'm on frame zero. When I draw using this tool, let me just turn on Auto Weld. As I create lines, you might notice, if you're used to previous versions of Anime Studio, that it actually makes an effort to create less points when you're drawing these lines. Anime Studio will go through and determine just what needs to be taken out to clean up the line. Now in this case, you're seeing quite a few points, and this will also be determined if we come up here to our freehand options. The new smoothing options down here can also determine that. Right now, you're going to get a lot of points because it's doing no smoothing. But if we were to bring it up, and then let's say draw out a line like this, you can see that there are way less points compared to the points down here. And we'll talk more about the smoothing options soon, but right now I want to move on to the freehand tool's ability to trim the start and end of lines. You'll see right up here, right next to Auto Weld, you have Trim Start and Trim End. So basically, you have to have Auto Weld turned on in order to access these options. As you can see, they're grayed out, but when I turn it on, then they're enabled. And this allows us to create more detailed shapes without worrying about trimming up lines. As an example, let me turn off Trim Start. And let's say I want to draw a tree. So I'll come out here, and I'm just going to start drawing my tree, just like this. And as you can see, when I overlap my lines to do this, and that one got a little bit away from me right there, I am able to draw these lines I intersect. But now, if I were to turn on, let's say, Trim Start and Trim End, let's come back over here, I'll make a tree right here now. As I start to do this, there's my first line. If I come up and do this one, there's my second, but when I release, you can see it trims off the line that was sticking out. And this can be done in a variety of different ways. So if I come down here, let's just draw a nice circle like that. Now if I come in and say draw a line and release, you can see it trims up the outsides of that line. Now this is all determined with these checkboxes. If I were to turn off trim end and do this again, you can see it trims off the beginning but leaves the end. I could then go in and do the same here by doing this and you can see now it's the opposite because trim end is the only one that's checked now what i'm doing here is just drawing random shapes but let's say i want to draw a tree or a cloud all those options could be enabled or disabled to help speed up the workflow now in addition to this i'm just going to highlight everything and delete let's come back here let's say i want to draw out a ground so once again i'm going to use the freehand tool and I'm going to turn off Auto Weld for this. But this time, I want to make sure that Merge Strokes is enabled. Now, I'm going to come in here and just start drawing something out. Let me increase the width of my line to, let's say, 6. And I can use a black stroke color just so it's easier to see. I'll come in here, and I'm just going to start drawing. Now, I'm just doing something pretty simple here. But let's say I just want to sketch out some ground here for this scene. As you can see, I'm just kind of adding lines and going about. And maybe I want to create a sketchy-like effect for the environment. Now, when I do this, as you can imagine, that could create quite a few points and lines. So let's say I want to go in now and change the color of all these lines. Well, with Merge Strokes, if I now choose, let's say, the Select Shape tool and click on this, you can see it identifies it as one shape. And that's because I had Merge Strokes enabled with the freehand tool. Now this means I can go in here and click on my style panel. And let's just create a green stroke, let's say for the grass. And you can see as I modify the colors, it's changing all the lines that I created because they are all identified as one shape. 
So that is pretty cool. So now, let me click OK. I want to come over here and take a look at my smoothing options for the freehand and blob tools. And I showed you this a little bit. Let me just scroll up here. Let's say we want to draw some clouds. I'm going to select again the freehand tool and go into my freehand options. Down here, you'll find the smoothing dial. If you crank this all the way to the right, you're going to get some drastic smoothing as you draw out your shapes. If you bring this to the left, all the way, what you draw is what you get. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to place my cursor down and just start drawing. You can see as I'm doing this that we're not getting a whole lot of change occurring with the line. It's filling in as I go, but that's to be expected with the tapering edges. Now when I release, you can see basically what I drew stays on screen. But now if I come over here to the freehand options and we crank the smoothing up, and now I start to draw, you can clearly see as I do this that the lines are being manipulated as I go. It's trying to smooth everything out. So if you don't have a drawing tablet and you want to create really smooth edges, you can adjust the smoothing as you see fit. And as you can see, it's greatly altering the way this tool works. The same can be applied with the blob brush. If I select this, you'll see right up here we have the same smoothing options. Turn this all the way down. I can start drawing. And you can see basically what we draw is what we get. But if I crank this up, let's come over here. You can see now it's definitely being manipulated as I draw additional points with the blob brush. Speaking of the blob brush, you'll find it's now much more consistent. As an example, if I were to come in here with my cursor and then using the command key just to use the eraser shortcut, I'm cutting in here to this shape. But notice as I do this that the shape itself is remaining consistent. We don't have any issues occurring here where let's say these lines are being reshaped because I'm altering these shapes over here. You'll also find that the effects created with the blob brush are now much more smooth and easier to look at. Point reduction has now been added to the blob brush as well. If we come over here, let me just re-enable checkered and come over here and click, you can see we have quite a few points that come in with the blob brush. But if I were to come over here now, click on the blob brush and then choose point reduction, which is new in AS11. And now if I try to draw some shapes here, we'll just do something like that come over here and select, you can see that there are way less points here versus the other shapes where I did not have point reduction enabled. If you want cleaner shapes with fewer points, you might want to enable that option as you use the blob brush tool. Two more things I would like to show you. First, you can see we have two strokes on the canvas. I just hit the T-Rex for right now, just to make this easier. Now you'll see at the top, it looks darker and a bit more inconsistent. We have darker spots going on. And overall, it has, I would say, a more contrasty look. Here, it's a much more consistent look. What we're doing here is simply toggling a new mode called Merge Alpha. First, if I click on this line, let's make sure we have it selected like that. And then we come up here to our brush you'll see we have the merge alpha setting right there. Now, if I click on this one and we choose merge alpha, you can see it's enabled. So really the merge alpha is what's causing this difference. Also note that my stroke is transparent. If we click here, you can see that it's a little bit halfway below the alpha setting. So it's a transparent stroke and the merge alpha allows us to view it in two different ways. Once again, if I just click off of this, you can see how that looks. Now, if I click once again on one of these lines, let's just choose this one. Now I want to select a new brush. In this case, I'm going to choose this one. Now I want to reduce the values of everything on the left to zero. 
just to show you how this works. The new option, Angle Drift, allows us to create a twisty effect for our brush strokes. If I come in here and start to increase this, you can see exactly what this is doing. And again, I'm using this brush type and I reduced everything to zero just to make this easier to see. But you could, if you wanted to, bring this up. You can bring your brush spacing up if you wanted to to see the different effects here. But you'll have an easier time understanding it if you have these things put to zero and then you start working with your angle drift. But if you're looking for a twisty type effect with your brush strokes, you can definitely play around with this. So we could kind of go like that, click OK, and you can see the effect. And it looks pretty interesting. Let me just do a render of that. So there's a lot of new little enhancements to the brushes and the drawing tools in Anime Studio 11. I think you'll find as you explore these settings, there is a lot you can work with. If you'd like more information or tutorials on Anime Studio, visit anime.smithmicro.com.